Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome to this lecture on energy control model and hazard control hierarchy. Energy control model and hazard control hierarchy. So, hazard control hierarchy is uh, known to you maybe because you might have heard of this, but energy control model uh, I do not know that whether you know or do not know, but ok we will combine the two and half an hour of time we will see that what is it and how it will help in our overall uh, interest that is prevention through design. So, let us see the contents. So, we will discuss energy control model then followed by an example and then hazard control hierarchy followed by two different examples. So, let me tell you the um, background here actually what you want to do in safety engineering. In safety engineering you have seen that there is hazard and hazard ultimately leads to accident. So, that is basically potential risk and the realized risk and as safety engineers I told repeatedly that your job is to understand this path and finally, you put barriers either in terms of prevention or in terms of mitigation so that the path will be broken. If you put in terms of prevention that is always better because it will not lead to the accident to happen. But there is the probabilistic view that uh, everything is random in some some or some part will be random not the totality. So, there will be some accident and, and, and accordingly prevent mitigation is also very very important concept and you have to give that. Uh, mitigative measures what I wear say uh, mitigative measures must be there. So, now <coughs> in in this particular lecture uh, we, we, we try to find out that how to come to those mitigative uh, preventive measures particularly uh, or the mitigative and the mitigative measures prevention and or mitigative measures that is what is our job today. It is not that I, I, I will will see that exactly the context specific preventive measures or mitigative measures. It is basically we are basically trying to give you some ideas or some principles so that once you know the total path from hazard to the uh, accident and uh, also to the ultimate accident scenarios. So, then what will happen you will be able to put the barriers in terms of uh, the hazard control and there is an hierarchy of control hierarchy means something is better than the others. If you go through the hierarchy you will find out that that may be the top one is the best and bottom one is the least effective in terms of prevention or mitigation as such hazard control ok. So, this is the background. Now, let us see the hazard control uh, energy control model. So, uh, let us take one example suppose a car. Now, if we if we a car at the parking car at parking plot. So, it is not on nothing. So, car at parking plot so, it, 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 it is zero energy state in the sense that there is uh, there is no kinetic energy uh, involved there. Only if you say potential energy with reference to mean sea level uh, that is a different part, but we are not going to that level of energy. So, here what we are saying that as it is uh, it is not on there is no engine running and there is no movement involved this is our zero energy state uh, like a um, machine a, is basically shut down shut down condition. But 
if it is a if it is a pressurized storage vessel like ours what, what we have seen the pressure tank where the within the tank if it is if completely discharged then that is basically the zero energy state. So, if when you start the that means switch on uh, and then ultimately you start the car. So, it basically start igniting fuel and that means non zero energy state started. This non in non zero energy state uh, can, can be under control so long you are uh, suppose you are the driver you are able to maintain the energy in the sense the speed of the car within your level of driving competency and uh, obviously with reference to the road condition and the other traffics so that is basically controlled energy so uh, that that will happen in the industrial situation also at the given system so it will be under control state now let us say that you have increased the speed in such a manner that ultimately uh, and there is a there is a traffic coming or maybe another car coming or another bicycle coming from other side and the and and when you saw this one and that the cycle coming at that time if you put the brake then there is a possibility that that you will not hit the uh, cycle or the other car coming towards you and you will control the speed when you will be able to manage the safe distance then the recontrol recontrolled energy takes place means braking ultimately control your speed and nothing happened so you are safe now that is the recontrol energy but as the car is still moving and and, you, and it is basically non zero energy state going back to non zero energy states so that mean what happened uh, even in the industry situation also when plant under operation so that basically it will be under normal operating condition so long it is not under normal operating condition it is basically controlled energy now what is uncontrolled energy basically the uh, when the uh, when you go beyond that there is some deviation takes place beyond that is normal uh, normal requirement so energy will be uncontrolled and if by your in a protection configuration you are able to recontrol it then ultimately what happen it will be again under normal condition so that non in zero energy state but under normal condition that is recontrolled energy now what it may so happen that so while you are driving the car you have seen the the, the other part uh, counterpart uh, maybe at much later state in that case in order to save that particular person or the property uh, what you will do you may take a different route and in that case you 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 what will happen and then you may save this but your desire intention was to go to a certain direction that has not happened but whatever happened but you gone to a different di direction um, you lost your time so that mean you have you have uh, lost some of the energy that is the dissipated energy but this dissipation is controlled dissipation because no accident has uh, ta taken place but the worst situation is that you have hit the cyclist so the cyclist will fall down and if he, it is so uh, worst condition that that person may die so in that case it is basically uncontrolled dissipation leading to damage so the uh, the dissipated energy can be controlled dissipation can be uncontrolled dissipation under controlled dissipation there will be no damage but ultimately uh, depending on the situation that means the you may go to the non zero energy state or the zero energy state but when the uncontrolled dissipation has taken place so ultimately damage has occurred and you will ultimately go back to the zero energy state with a lot of damage so this is what is the not self the energy control model so that mean you when you have your plant you please control the energy the way you 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 design your system from the from the controlling the energy point uh, energy then you are you know that what is the inherent safety or as a safety uh, of the system that you have designed so that means there is normal intent normal conditions so your system should operate under this condition 
even though there will be abnormality or uncontrolled energy your system there must be a system must be configured in such a manner that this uncontrolled energy can be recontrolled and it will again operate under control energy state. But there even then there may be situation when there will be some kind of dissipated energy which we may say the accident uh, some kind of uh, deviations uh, that ultimately realized and then some energy is lost. So, that dissipated energy may ultimately uh, controlled in such a manner that no damage takes place except the energy lost or it will be completely uncontrolled and it will lead to a quite huge damage and which is totally undesirable. Okay. So, this is basically energy control model. Now, with reference to this energy control model, I want to show you one that pressure tank system what we have discussed. So, yes you can you can think in other uh, explain this this energy control model with reference to this example also other way also, but okay or the way I am explaining it is quite meaningful and you will appreciate it also that pumping start non into energy states. So, tank within normal pressure condition that is control energy. Now, uncontrolled energy means tank over pressure condition you all know that when the over pressure condition will take place we have discussed it several times. Then what happen under over pressure condition op opening of relief valve should happen and operator shutdown of the system that is what is recommended here. So, what will happen under this situation the energy will be recontrolled but at the same time also when relief valve open some of the gases will go out. So, that means the control dissipation and recontrolled again energy recontrol this is possible by this by this protection configuration. So, again uh, that non injury energy state means so long it is working within the timer set time that is under normal condition. So, what will happen? that when this operator of relief valve and operator shutdown this will fail. So, there, there, there will be ultimately that means, the control dissipation recontrol of energy as well as control dissipation both fails then there, there will be uncontrolled dissipations means you are not able to uh, bring down the pressure uh, to the designed level and over pressure condition it will persist maybe pressure go on increasing and under certain pressure tank rupture will take place and this lead to damage to the tank to the system to the surroundings also. Okay. So, this is a simple example, but in your plant it will be a huge one. So, you have to understand this with reference to your plant or the system where you are working or for which you are going to design if you are a student okay. or you are an engineer. So, you will do it. Okay. So, with this concept we will now discuss the hazard control hierarchy. Let us see what is hazard control hierarchy. Hazard control hierarchy this was proposed by Haddon W junior in 1970. So, you may go through this paper and he has given 9 uh, that design principles P 1 is so, sometimes he says strategies or principle P 1 is avoid the hazard, P 2 is limit the energy, P 3 is substitute, P 4 prevent build up of energy, P 6 prevent release of hazard, P 7 modify rate of release of hazard, P 8 separate in time and space, P 9 incorporate barriers, uh, P 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, so, okay, P 7. P i 8 P 9. So, this is P 5 and this is P 6. So, incorporate barrier and modify qualities. This is uh, in order of decreasing uh, effectiveness. So, level of effectiveness is maximum here and minimum here. So, if you can have the hazard so, the resultant accident scenario from, from that hazard will never happen because hazard is not there. So, that means, if, if such thing is possible you should do it. Okay. So, we will see one after another. So, these are the these are the things basically adapted from Adam Junior. 
we have we have done some kind maybe some little amount of modification there here and there but more or less it is basically going as per the principles or the strategies given by junior head on so we will explain now each of the each of the principle so let us see that the principle so first is avoid hazard what does it mean when you are designing something so you should not create the hazard you are designing a new system should not create the hazard that is basically prevent the creation of hazard at the first place what does it mean during design so <clears throat> some example avoiding elevating person or objects avoiding use of equipment material human activity that is possible source of hazard this is a technology issue so if this is achieved the system will not depart from the non zero energy state that is the energy we, are, we have linked with energy control model this is the best of all design alternative as it will ensure no risk however this is seldom achievable so that mean if this is achievable that mean you in the during the design you have committed the mistake or you have not thought of that or maybe during design that time this technology was not available then second one reduce the amount of hazard brought into being that is that i said that limit the energy so use minimum energy materials handling smaller weight smaller container removing unneeded objects from overhead surfaces some examples given so what will happen if you can limit the energy this principle represent non zero energy state however aims to keep the energy at the smallest possible level then then let us see the third one substitute what does it mean replacing a hazard with a lesser hazard in the system using least hazardous material from the available ones for example suppose you are using nitrogen gas for some work argon gas gas may be may do the same purpose so it is better to use argon rather than nitrogen because nitrogen is more hazardous and argon is inert gas so it is less hazardous so what will happen if you do this then this principle also represent the non zero energy state but again it tries to minimize the energy level then the fourth one fourth is prevent build up of energy because the first three are suppose first three not possible then you have to you have to create a system in such a manner that the building up of energy like over pressure condition should not take place like avoiding build up of high pressure temperature voltage acceleration potential energy etc reducing operating speed using regulators governors all those things particularly for the pressure tank example how do you uh, how do you prevent the Uh, build up of over pressure condition so you have seen that alarm pressure gauge operator and then and then relief valve uh, operator all those things and timers time set all those things are there these ultimately prevent build up of energy so this principle tries to maintain the energy in a control state as indicated in the energy model although the energy in non zero energy state okay so now come to the other one prevent release of hazard that already exist so let me let me go back one after another avoid the hazard most effective reduce the amount of hazard brought into limit the energy if you cannot avoid the hazard go for limiting the energy then if there is substitute available it is better to use the less hazardous material and then suppose first three fails then you can go for build up of energy should not be there so even though you use less hazardous material that may also lead to build up of energy so that mean there are some 
that the mean principle 3 also may be coupled with principle that 4 prevent build up energy that is needed. Now, come to the fifth principle or fifth strategy. So, we are saying it is principle prevent release of hazard that already exist. So, designing containment vessels, structure and equipment with appropriate safety factor, providing fail safe interlocks on equipment, installing railings on elevations, providing non slip working surfaces, control movement of vehicles to avoid collisions. So, these are the few examples. So, you can add on it. So, what will happen if we apply this principle? This principle maintain the energy in a control state within control. Next is modify rate of release of hazard from its source. That means, here you are preventing release, here you are slow down, you are slowed, uh, slowing down the release. Okay. In P4, prevent build up of energy, P6, okay. even if build up, it should not be released that energy should not be released. Then 6, if it is to be released, then it is the, re, the release of energy should be slow. Okay. So, providing safety valve, we have seen that really valve airbags in automobiles etcetera. If there is an uncontrolled energy in the system, applying this principle is recontrol energy in the energy model. So, see ultimately this up to P 5 what we are saying that maintain energy in the control state. When P going to P 6 what we are saying that it is basically uncontrolled energy state and you want to you are basically recontrolling the energy. <coughs> After that Okay, you have you could not avoid the hazard, but from P2 to P6, it is not not it is not that that P2 will be sufficient or P5 will be sufficient. You have to understand the layers or how much many layers required. Okay, after that what happened after P6 whatever, so it is it is it may so happen that whatever you do there will be the accident, uh, but it will be in a much reduced scale maybe once in a blue moon. Then, even then you require to separate in time and space the hazard that which is to be protected. So, special isolation of hazard for example, installation of hazardous gas storage in a remote center of the plant. This is special isolation even if something happen it will not affect the people there. Then temporal isolation one is special isolation another one is temporal isolation. For example, firing explosive in mines phase after removing all person from the concern area. Providing remote control operation, ensuring that access during operation and maintenance require minimum exposure of persons. So, this is basically separate the hazard from the uh, target. If you can do this, then this is also a very good hazard control methodology. This principle tries to at achieve control dissipation if the energy get dissipated after taking all possible care. Fine. So, special isolation what will happen even though the, uh, the accident takes place as the targets are not available if I consider human is the target except the property which basically contain the hazard. So, actually they will be saved. So, after P 7 separate the hazard and that which is to be protected by interposition of material barrier incorporate barriers, guards, fences, seals, walls, safety nets all those things. In fact, we you we most of us understand by safety this ok machine is not guarded properly. So, when working may be on the scaffold there should be some some kind of shield or you may say that, okay, the particular location the material what where work is going on hazard work is going on there will be barricades 
so rail railway line should be very should be basically there should be railings so all those things so we and protective equipment most of the people understand that uh, that, that sorry to tell that including money so i can say most of us not most of the people most of the most of us understand safety is this but please understand as per as hazard control hierarchy its position is eighth position so that means you have not thought of p1 to p7 as a safety engineer or safety manager or a safety professional or stakeholder for safety you are thinking that this is my this is my safety requirement it is not correct this is required but previous seven principles are more important than this having the other principle doesn't mean that you should not have ninth yeah, that p8 it will be there because it is additional it is the almost the last layer and then p9 modify the basic relevant qualities of the hazard if possible so modify the qualities of the area that may cause damage or loss modify shock concentrating surfaces eliminate sharp corners sharp edges providing padding cushioning something like this this principle also achieve control dissipation so you if you see that there are nine principles we have discussed so far now p9 p9 control dissipation p8 control dissipation p7 control dissipation sorry then your your p6 recontrol the energy p5 maintain within control so that mean up to p5 it will it is it will help you in to operate within the control limit p6 that recontrol the energy then p7 p8 p9 they are control dissipation so ultimately that mean accident has taken place or some undesired event has taken place so that's why this hazard control hierarchy is a very very important one and please keep in mind that if you really understand the hazards and ultimately the path leading to accidents and if you understand if you have engineering knowledge design knowledge that the system knowledge and hazard knowledge with the help of hazard control hierarchy you will be able to find out the barriers what i can say the protection measures it may it will be from the prevention and well as mitigation point of view and i am expecting that there are many uh, industry professional who may be uh, that going through this particular uh, course so for you it is it is wonderful uh, things to you must know, apply and i i hope that you all know uh, these things maybe not linking with energy control model but this knowledge you have now you refine it and and then uh, you do project and ultimately find out the design and redesign, redesign interventions using this model in fact in one lecture lecture later i will show you how it is to be applied so with this i i will show you two example by 5 minutes of time that how the principles can be applied for example this let this is a uh, this is a specialized storage vessel situated uh, somewhere in the plant and then we want to apply this principle that avoid the hazard suppose we are saying that toxic gas what is basically stored here this is the hazard now the pressurized tank itself is also hazard but we are basically considering one that gas pressurized toxic gas storage so toxic gas if you do not use then toxic gas related uh, complications will not be there now limit the energy means reduce the quantity of toxic gas substitute use non toxic chemical inert gas prevent build up avoid high pressure and high temperature high pressure high temperature situation prevent release design vessel with appropriate safety factor so that what will happen the leakage the holes in the the tank it will not take place so release is not possible modify rate of release 
it's okay there can be uh, but there is a limit of the uh, pressure then you must have the relief valves so rate of release will be modified separate in time and space diverting leakage through fans blowers this fan can blow to another direction if that will basically uh, that space wise separate and time wise and or evacuation of person so that people will not get affected incorporate barriers means provide gas mask modify qualities mean make gas less flammable less toxic by mixing with other gases so okay so mixing with other gases that may uh, come but here we are saying that entirely use the different one okay so this is one example but please understand there are many more hazards we are basically considering only the toxic gas so with reference to toxic gas what you will do that is given here another one suppose a typical mining case suppose roof fall in mines so what is the hazard can you avoid roof fall in underground mines so yes if there is a technology that will be such that roof fall will be completely eliminated fine so but here what happen i reckon impossible unless technology changes that is the system is designed in such a way that unprotected roof doesn't exist do not roofs do not exist if you can make it possible otherwise limit the energy control the size of the fall size of unprotected roof through height of the seam gallery width pillar size etc so unprotected means if you do some kind of method the change in method design so that mean unprotected roof it will be less in in the area so what will happen energy will be limited substitute we don't know because this is a natural hazard is natural layer it is impossible prevent build up redistribution of stress so you know when you create a void ultimately the stress will be it will be distributed distributed to the neighboring solid blocks and if you if you change the dimensions again the change in uh, stress distribution so you may, uh, may may extract the mine in such a manner that the redistribution of stress will be in such a manner that it will not it will not um, make building of the pressure or the roof load rather it will help in uh, help in that means uh, preventing that kind of load which ultimately causes the roofs to collapse then prevent release support system it is obvious support system is there roof support modify of rate of release also through roof support system suppose if you use the roof bolting and if you use the timber support and definitely there will be different kind of uh, different kind of um, impact now separate in time and space allow roof fall in the walked out area do not allow persons to enter the unprotected area in fact it is it is in the regulation that it should not be done incorporate barriers use helmet and guards always you use modify qualities dressing to remove sharp corners and loose coal lumps so it is done in mind but please remember that during dressing the room may fall and it will ultimately uh, lead to accident so dressing is also a hazardous job but if you do dressing with, with with proper precaution what will happen ultimately the quality of roof will be that will be from damage point of view it will be changed and uh, the impact will be less okay so this is what is the energy control model and hazard control hierarchy which can be used by in the in the industry to prevent accident protect target or people from accident okay so this is what is the reference hadon junior this will be it is 1970 on the escape of tigers an ecological note american journal of public health 60 this is this is the editorial part and this from this i have taken okay okay i hope that you enjoyed this lecture here uh, what we have discussed we discussed that safety is na age energy control how because whatever small work you do there is energy of one or more kinds so if you know how to control the energy 
then ultimately you know how to achieve the desired safety. So that's why we have given you the principles or the philosophy of hazard control model and the principles behind it and at the same time with the uh, that hazard control hierarchy developed by Haddon W. Jr. we in linked with the energy control model and we have shown you the 9 principles and how those principles can be applied in real world situation. So, this is a very uh, important uh, concepts for safety, all safety engineers and in, in later class we will see that use of this in designing safety related intervention. Thank you very much.